Okay, so we're back at this American Fact Finder homepage. Uh, you can either follow the links like we did in the last video, or you can just do a Google search for American Fact Finder. It'll bring you here. This time, though, we're going to do an advanced search and hit Show Me All. And the first thing we want to do is add a filter um, for the county level. So remember what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to grab the population for every county in Ohio in 2015. Uh, so I'm going to go county. The state would be Ohio. And I'm just going to click on all counties within Ohio. Add to my selections. So it looks like it doesn't do much, but it does put it up there in my selections box. Then you can't see this, but if you go all the way to the right there, there's a button that says close with an X. You'll click on that. Then I'm going to look for population. Um, and the second one here is what I, I really want, these uh, population estimates. So the census every 10 years is an exact number. Every other year it's just going to be an estimate of the population, but that's uh, that's good enough for, for what I need there. Uh, so if I look at this chart, I have all the counties in Ohio. Um, I have the um, year over here. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can select this data so we can so I'm copying it, opening up my spreadsheet again. Um, maybe I'll just put it uh, over here for now. I'm pasting it. Um, and if I scroll over, so I need to be a little careful what these columns represent. Let me go back. Uh, what I really want is that last column there. That's the 2015. So all the way over. These are the numbers I want. Um, so let me go ahead and I'm just going to copy them. Now I do want to be careful that my rows are lining up. So one thing I'm looking for is, is the entire Ohio total there? And it's not, so that's a good sign. So when I go over and paste these populations here, oops, that was a control Z is a undo there. Try that again. So I'm selecting all of my population estimates, bringing it in there. There we go. Um, doesn't quite match up with the zebra striping, but uh, that's not a big deal. What is a big deal is I need to make sure that this county that I'm putting the 28,000 for is really the same county. So originally this was Adams County, this first row, and this first row of the data I just brought in was also Adams County. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. Here, here's one way that I, I like to do real quick. I'm going to add a column here. And what I want to do is, is I could do it eyeball Adams, Adams, okay, I'm okay on the first row, Allen, Allen, I'm okay on the second row. Uh, but something I like to do is I say, let me grab, say, the first um, five characters of that cell and make this a if statement. If that equals the same as the first five characters of this cell, um, I want you to give me a zero. In other words, the two are equal, so everything's okay. If not, comma, I want you to give me a one. So a zero here means that whatever the first five characters there equal the first five here. Why did I choose five? Uh, I just wanted to get the first part of the county county name. Uh, why didn't I say if this entire cell equals this entire cell? Well, because these have that comma Ohio and these don't, so they, they wouldn't actually equal. I double click on there, scroll down, I see all zeros. That tells me that everything lined up here, which means that when I cut and paste these numbers here, everything was in the right order. So it was it was legitimate to just cut and paste them. Uh, there are more advanced ways called a merge to do that, um, but they do require a little more 
technical finesse there. Now I'm just getting rid of all this data I brought in and I have the population here. So total number in poverty, I've got the number of people in Adams County, the percent poverty, total number in poverty, well we might think I just multiply those two together, right? And that gives me total number of people in poverty, 689,000 in Adams County alone. So clearly something is off there. Uh, and you may remember that a, a percent, uh, to change that to a decimal, uh, you need to divide by 100. In other words, that'll move this decimal place two to the left. So I want to take that product I found and divide by 100. Now this gives me something strange. It gives me that 6,893 6, people, which seems reasonable, 0.9, that's certainly not reasonable. Um, and to get around that, there's a, a couple different ways. Um, one way is to just select the column, format, number, and uh, I think there was actually an even better one there that I missed. Uh, maybe just this plain plain number here. Uh, and that'll give me the, the total number without any decimal. Why is there that decimal? Well, because of this percent. It's really not exactly 24.6%. It's probably 24.6112, something like this that would give you an exact number. Uh, but we're rounding. This will get us uh, close enough. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and total this population here and bring this across, uh, all the way across, but remember that percent poverty isn't something. Um, and I'm creating two green boxes down here. Okay, then I go back up to the top, uh, creating a formula here where I want to take this number here, my percent poverty, uh, let me click on that, and I want to subtract whatever's in this green box, press enter, uh, and notice it says absolute deviation, so I really want the absolute value of that. If it's negative, I want it to turn positive, if it's positive, I want to keep it positive. And what that is, deviation, is just how far off of the number you are. So this number is 24.6 units away from whatever's in that green box, which right now is nothing. Later there will be a number there. Uh, and I'm going to be copying this formula down, but I always want it to go to that green box. Um, so what I what I do is I put dollar signs um, before the E and before the 91. That'll make sure that uh, I'm always going back to that green cell. Double click on this to get all of those absolute deviations. Now I do have a total deviation there. And squared deviation I'm just taking this number times itself. And I'll double click on that, send those down there, and it should go all the way down to my sum. I'm going to put my line back in here that got deleted out. Okay. Um, one final thing I wanted to do there was a visual display. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to shrink these just a little bit so you can see more of my screen here. And what I, I want to do these, um, the visual display is for that percent poverty, and, and that may be a different column for you. Um, so I'm going to select that, insert chart, and it's actually looking quite nice, but I'm going to customize that just a bit. Uh, title, I'm going to say um, give it an appropriate name. Uh, let me go ahead and insert that. And I want to label my axes also. Let me so 
So to the left vertical axis title. So for me, this is number counties at something like that. And this is percent poverty is actually correct already. Uh, and then I could size this up. And one thing I noticed right away is I noticed this county right there. And I'd, I'd want to go look into that. It looks like it's uh, Athens County, actually. Um, and so I might think a little bit about why, why that would be there. Uh, my guess is that it's something connected to Ohio University's presence in Athens County, um, but it could also be that that area is the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, so that, that could be part of the reason. But at any time I create a, a visual data, I want to remember that there's stories behind behind this visualization, and I'm looking for different trends and, and patterns inside this visualization.